put money in your pocket, that crypto wallet, that bing bada bing ching ching big profit. Even when the market sideways. I'm about to drop some hugely powerful alpha. And that's what they call it. They call it alpha, believe me. Okay. And not many people know this, but alpha means that I know big things, strong things, powerful things. So here's the alpha, folks. <laughs> If you want to be hugely rich like me, you got to join and subscribe to the Believes Crypto YouTube channel. You got to become a member because many people say, quite frankly, it's the strongest YouTube channel out there. It's fantastic. It's the best. So let me know what you think, folks. Funny Donald Duck. I'm looking for ways to get paid. I'm checking my coins around breakfast. Then again around bedtime. Bet this. It's not financial advice, <laughs> but I'm always right. 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 My lady and I got my shine. Money in my pocket and we're feeling fine. Radio's loud and we're playing sublime. I think it's gonna be a good day, my own. I made it this far, it's a miracle Floating in the clouds now, used to be miserable Never looking back since I changed my ways I'm on that good life tip today I'm looking for the good life, good life Sitting on top of the world I wanna be shining like diamonds and pearls I want you to go there with me, girl I'm looking for the good life, good life Baby, we can have it all We can make love out of waterfalls I'm living that good what is going on everybody i hope you're having a good morning my name is believes and woo, it's getting a little bit crazy in the crypto market in the last few minutes uh we're starting to see uh, a little bit of movement to the downside we might even be breaking some support levels in the next few minutes as everybody in the world awaits jerome powell which is something that he's been waiting his entire life for any girl to say i'm waiting for you jerome so he's super excited and i think we're all super excited for him hope he's having a uh having a good go of it and uh yeah so uh <sighs> jerome you can only mess this up at this point. Now, uh, Jerome Powell will go in front of Congress for the next two days. And mostly, I think day two is going to be kind of a repeat. And Congress has been historic for not wanting to move the needle and not saying anything too uh, descriptive or um, allowing the Fed to quote unquote tip their hat as to what's really on the table. But at this point, uh, we're going to go through a little bit of what's happening right now, and we'll get kind of an idea of what is going on. First and foremost, what is up? At Lysergic Acid is in the house. Richard Caldwell's in the house. Good morning. Justin W's in here. Stig Beater says, yo, yo, people, how are we all doing today? Do you think the market will pump or dump today? And the answer to that is yes um ben fair good morning timsky what is going on uh dcaing that bone today daily macd about to flip as a matter of fact the macd on bone is so far down right now that this seems like the perfect opportunity because i think it was a trading at a dollar 45 or a dollar 47 something like that uh, just a little while ago so it looked like what a like a perfect moment where you can just bang right through in a, in a great entry and get super lucky on that play if it flips and if it happens to flip and goes pink and then starts running back into the green as this day progresses then it is a perfect opportunity uh to make a big play um greg m in the house crypto stevo mdk 420 we got a lot of lightning bolts happening if you're a volt fan hit those lightning bolts e yebrid is in the house kamal mr p crypto jeff t uh, Doobie Tube, uh, Joni Metcalf, J Manuel, Lunk 210, Lando A, Carlos Carbajal, Local 420, 
Uh, we'd like to see you a lot more. Cash Katz is in the house. Uh, Daniel Volt in the house. Kenneth Dimitri. Uh, Vitalij is here. Hopkins Transport. Richie's Plane Talk. What is going on, my man? Wens B is in the house. Uh, G Man is here. Crypto V. Uh, we got a packed house going on already. Crypto Perez. J Smooth. Trevino Joe. We are loaded up. Guys, listen, here's what we got going on. Let's break this down as quickly as we can. Dow futures are, were sitting around 2025 20, just a few minutes ago, down to seven. So it looks like there's some. Uh, a little bit of nervousness, pre-market jitters as it may be. Uh, good morning, Pepsi, Ryan Lee, and Christian. Uh, free Diz in the house, Daniel Cardoso. Uh, so I don't think there's much in the pre-market that's going to tell us. Uh, moving over to crypto, you can see right here, starting to bleed just a little bit, 0 0.34, 0 0.36, as we go down a little bit more on Ethereum, and 0 0.24 over here on Bitcoin. Uh, not going to talk about too much more. Uh, then we're going to move over here and you can see Bitcoin. We're starting to see a little bit of red over the last hour uh, as the market was bleeding. Now, the market was at around 986, 985 just a few minutes ago, down to 983. So a little bit of liquidity was pulled out of the market. ETH just dipped down to 1560, which means that it broke that support line. You can see here that every once in a while it's broken that support line, uh, not by much and not for very long. So... Uh, I, I, I don't know that there's any kind of yeah, reason for any of this. Um, what's up with terrarium pumping if they have a V2? Uh, there's nothing up with that. That's actually just, um, it's it's unsupported. They pulled the liquidity. So anybody who puts something in, uh, it makes it weird. They've ceased trading on it. So it doesn't really matter what's going on with it. Um, if you don't like, if you like staring at, you know, an extra hundred thousand dollars in your wallet, then you could stare at it if you want to. Uh, but they, they disabled trading. Uh, Milton did that about 12 hours ago, um, which is what causes pumps by the way. So you'll see the, the price of it just kind of dip up, uh, more and more and more. But I mean, you basically, you just throw that into, uh, uh, you just throw that into a dead wallet somewhere, uh, so that you're not disturbed by it. If it bothers you to see, um, that money. So, um, but, um, 1560 up to 1562, it looks like we broke back into this. So we're still running support on that line as you look through most of these. And what I did, by the way, uh, I haven't done this on everything is I've tried to create these red and green channels, uh, where we are trading, where we hope to be trading, uh, just kind of give you an idea. Like we don't have to make any moves. We don't have to make any second guesses until we get outside of this little red box right here. It just seemed to me like it was easier uh, to let people know this way that this is how the uh, this is how the trading is going. Uh, we need nine hundred ninety seven trillion uh, billion dollars in the market before we really start looking again. Otherwise, we're just going to be trading within a channel uh, with a low down here of nine seventy four. You know, la la. Uh, Bitcoin uh, twenty two three fifty three. Now, the best part about Bitcoin is that we're still seeing the same thing playing out that we've been seeing, and that is. We're in this channel with this upward momentum. Um, well, they don't get anything because there isn't anything. That's like that's that's the point. Like they're they're just trying to get rid of the tokens. Uh, there's no value to them. There's no liquidity in there. So uh, what there is is a very not. I mean, let's go look at it. As you can see right here, there's $79 in total liquidity. So that's the kind of life-changing shit that we're arguing about at this point. Uh, if you tried to cash out uh, and you had all of the tokens, if you had all, you know, 5 trillion tokens or however many tokens there are, if you had all 5 trillion tokens, you get $79 out of it. So that's, that's it's not worth talking about. That's all there is. It, it's that there's just nothing more to it. It's there's no money there. Uh, there's still 10,000 holders, but the liquidity was taken and moved over to part two. That's that's why there's a Terra two. So it doesn't matter how much you have. It doesn't matter how much it says. The maximum amount that you can get out of it is $79.73 if you have all of the tokens in that ecosystem. That's all. And the reason that there's 100% taxes to prevent 
people from buying anymore. That's, I mean, that's basically what it is. So anyway, uh, back to it. So we're trending upwards in this channel. We're still continuing with this top up here. That should break towards the upside. Like that's the, the most logical path is for it to break to the upside. Now with the nervous sentiment in the market, then, you know, you, you, you could argue that maybe there's an opportunity for it to break down. And there is always an opportunity for it to break down, but it doesn't look like that right now. However, <clears throat> has to be said that this is a bull flag that's printing as we are right now. And a lot of people are arguing that, you know, this is a parallel channel uh, going through here. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I think that this is another opportunity for a pump. And let me tell you, um, we're going to actually look at some news that kind of explains a little bit about why. Uh, same thing over here for Ethereum, by the way. Uh, I think Ethereum is making that same move. Doesn't look as, as, it doesn't look as good over here because you've only had that one top over here. So, you know, you're kind of looking at that channel moving upwards, which usually means that it's going to break to the downside. Now, if it were a downward facing channel, then you would have a lot better opportunity to see it break to the upside. Or again, if it were uh, that pennant formation. But if I start to draw a pennant formation here, then you can see here that it's broken out several times across the top. And that's not really where it is. It's really facing upwards. And when you start to look at it facing upwards like this, then that does mean that, and this is probably about the best that you could do right there. And if it's moving upward like that, then it's probably going to make a break to the downside. So um, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that Ethereum is holding up as well. Now we do know that March 14 appears to be the date that the shang capella upgrade goes through so you know maybe we'll see a little bit of a pump but we got about seven days before we start to see some downward sort of momentum on uh ethereum now we're not sure if that uh downward momentum will sustain or not uh it's really going to depend on the crypto market in general now some of the things that are happening right now we got about 15 minutes until the dow jones market opens up uh so let's move on over here Treasury yields fall as investors anticipate Fed Chair Powell's remarks. And that tells me, uh-oh, Richie's plain talk in the house just gifted 10 more memberships to people uh, for this chat. I appreciate you so much, Richie. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, folks, this is... Um, this is what I'm talking about. We need as many members as we can get into this. Um, uh, I need as many memberships as we can possibly get to continue to bring you all of the information every single day. Uh, so, Richie, uh, thank you so much. This is the second time that Richie uh, has come through big time on memberships. And by the way, when I'm sitting here, um, uh, I don't get... Uh, uh, I, I don't I, I don't get a notice on that for some reason on StreamYard. I get a notice on almost everything except the the memberships. Uh, Forsaken one was gifted a membership. Uh, G Bossa was gifted one. Dutch Cheese Cube was Tennessee Eco Man. Daughter's Father. Pulse Chain. Hex Crypto. Harold Brown. Xander Harris. Cajun Crypto. Uh, Sky Stonefly was gifted a membership. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, you guys. Um, and Richie, you're a go you're goaded here, man. You are absolutely goaded. Appreciate you. Um, so anyway, Treasury yields fall as investors anticipate Fed Chair Powell's remarks. Now, what does that mean? That means that the this really means that the stock market has decided that they don't think that his comments are going to negatively affect the market. That's why the Treasury yield is falling. Uh, U.S. Treasury yields declined on Tuesday as investors awaited fresh comments on the outlook. I hate when people, it's always women who say fresh comments uh, from the outlook of for the economy and monetary policy from Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. Like they're cracking the can on new words. You know what I mean? The yield on the 10-year Treasury was down over four basis points to 3.938. Two-year Treasury was trading at 4.872 after falling about two basis points. Uh, Fed Chairman Powell is due to give testimony about the state of the U.S. economy uh, before the Congress on Tuesday and Wednesday. Investors are expecting to gather fresh insights 
into the central bank's expectation for inflation and its monetary policy path from this comment. Uh, concerns about the pace of rate increases dragging the U.S. economy into a recession have spread among investors and prompted many to hope for the Fed to pause rate hikes this year. In recent weeks, Fed officials have hinted that rates could still go higher and remain elevated for longer. So uh, let's drop that for a second and let's move over here to another analysis of it. Dow futures rose slightly on Tuesday. Um, Facebook parent Meta rallied 2%. Um, Powell is scheduled to do this. Currently, traders uh, place a 70% chance of a quarter percentage point rate hike at the next meeting. That means that about 30% or somewhere around 27% actually are looking at a 50 basis point hike. That number might go up over the next couple of days, and they're looking right now for that to happen. If that happens, then the stock market goes down as they price that rate hike in. Now, um, Guidewire reported mixed fiscal res results. Dick's Sporting Goods, C Limited, and Thor also reported their earnings and were on the move. Dick's Sporting Goods shares jumped 4% on strong results. Uh, Tesla traded down 0.04. Apple and Microsoft rose modestly. Um, <clears throat> but here's where it comes in. The stock market seems to be growing more confident that the Fed will be able to tame inflation without sending the U.S. economy into a harsh recession. That said, a hawkish tone this week from Powell wouldn't be surprising as recent readings on inflation have revealed stubbornly high prices amid strong hiring and consumer spending. Inflation will eventually come down to the Fed's preferred target around 2%, but how long will it take? Now is an important time to read. Uh, we're not going to do an advertisement for those guys. But what we're what we're generally getting to right now is that uh, the the markets are trying to figure out what's going on, but they think that what the Fed is doing right now, uh, the smartest of the economists, uh, and by the way, when we, when we say that, uh, the smartest of the economists don't work for the government because if they did, they would be underpaid. The smartest economists work for the businesses that are saying, yeah, I think we've done enough. Uh, the issue right now is just time. Uh, so that's what we're seeing right now. That's why they're more confident the Fed will be able to tame the inflation because they look at what's happening. They see what's happening and they're hoping to see something kind of play out. Now, uh, if you look at oil prices, oil prices are around 80 a barrel. Um, that seems to be the sweet spot at this point. Um, that is, by the way, leading to you look at the gas prices and you look at the oil prices around the country right now. Uh, and you see that the gas prices continue, right? And that is because um, you're being gouged. I mean, and there's nobody that's going to do anything about it, by the way. You know, we have to uh, we have to at least be honest and, and say this, right? That, that, that you're being gouged and nobody's going to do anything about it. And they're not going to do anything about it uh, because uh, they can't. They're all bought and paid for by the same oil companies. So, uh, you know. But I guess we'll get some fresh insight into their freshness of oil, which is basically old dinosaur. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so make sure that you fill up your car on old dinosaur. Uh, all right. So while we're doing this, I'm going to talk about five cryptos real quick that have an opportunity that they that are set to break the bears backs this week. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I looked at these and, and I kind of agree with them. Uh, but I feel like a couple of them have already run a little bit too hot. So I'm not sure how much more they've got. But SNX, which is synthetics, is a protocol made specifically for the purpose of derivatives, a financial instrument that derives its value from an underlying asset like crypto or stocks. This makes it extremely popular with website with protocol websites stating a total value locked at nearly 710 million. According to CoinGecko, the token is up more than 18% in the weekly time frame, which is why I'm saying I don't feel like it's got much more room. Uh, this this breakthrough might be a sign for a further upside in the short to medium term. Um, this guy is basically like now the problem that I have with with Synthex is that I think they're this guy is, is synthetics is, is guys basically telling you, hey, you know what you should do Buy the top. That's crazy to me. Right. GMX, one of the tokens that enables the ecosystem of the same name, GMX, is used to as the official utility and governance token of the ecosystem. This decentralized exchange mainly focuses on derivatives trading, according to their website. This guy's really big into derivative trading right now. 
So with GMX ecosystem littered with updates and positive news, it's no wonder for the token to pump nearly 5% this past day. This price movement is being supported at 66.54 with the bull set to test 76.52 in the coming days. Uh, that's about a 15% increase. So that is a potential. Uh, if the token breaks through the resistance, a retest of 88.59 is a possibility in the coming days. That's an idea where, yeah, you've got about a 33% opportunity uh, for a run right here. So that one makes a little bit more sense. Uh, Decentraland, we also know where Decentraland has been. Uh, Decentraland is a virtual reality platform designed to create a metaverse for its users. Recent ecosystem developments have provided a major boost to the confidence of bulls in Decentraland's native token mana at the time of writing. Token was up 5%. Don't buy on the green candle, by the way. This price movement comes after a slump that followed the general market trend in the past few days. However, uh, the token is, uh, uses the 61.57 support as a launch pad. Bulls might be able to break through to the 61.87 resistance in the coming days with a potential to test 62. Not big move. Uh, FTM after a nearly 6% decline. By the way, we do have to state here, FTM at one point was trading for $3.01 in the last bull run. Uh, and it was the it was the run up uh, of, around October of 2021 where it did really just take off. Uh, it has changed, by the way, the way that it trades. So um, even if we're we're not seeing the gigantic move, we're still seeing uh, a lot of trading and a lot of enthusiasm about the new Phantom. After a near six percent decline in the few days, Phantom came into the rescue of investors as its price recovered to forty two point seven eight, which represents a seven percent increase. The token support is at forty two seventy two. Uh, F bulls can enjoy a probable breakthrough at 4277 and 4280 in the coming days. And then Matic bulls can find support at 116 with a possible upside of 116.4. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're giving you just we're at 113 right now. So, you know, this one, you come back here and you look at what's going on at Polygon and, Remember that that high up there was 156. Now the question becomes, can this have a breakout? And would that breakout <coughs> set it up for new highs? And this one looks more like it than, uh, than anything else. Uh, matter of fact, I do think I have FTM up here. And if I don't, uh, so much for me. We're not putting it up there right now. But uh, guys, if you want to, go check these out. It's... Uh, SNTX, or ST, SNX, GMX, MANA, FTM, and MATIC. Do your own research. Figure it out for yourself. Uh, see what it is. Um, and if you like that, um, there's some opportunity. There is some opportunity here. Uh, SEC files an emergency action against BK Coin in the 100 million crypto fraud scheme. And I didn't even know Burger King had a coin, right? So uh, this is pretty cool. Um, and it's not really. It's Kevin Kang. Um, the SEC announced Monday it's filed an emergency action against Miami investor advisor BK Coin and one of its principals, Kevin Kang, for orchestrating a $100 million crypto fraud scheme, Ponzi scheme even. The securities regulator explained that it successfully obtained an asset freeze appointment of a receiver and other emergency released against BK Coin and Kang. The defendants disregarded the structure of the funds, commingling investor assets, and used more than $3.6 million to make Ponzi-like payments to fund investors. The complaint alleges that Kang misappropriated at least $371,000 of investor money to pay for vacations, sporting event tickets, and a New York City apartment, among other things. Furthermore, Kang attempted to conceal the unauthorized use of investor money by providing altered documents with inflated bank account balances to the third-party administrators for certain of the funds. Moreover, BK Coin allegedly made material misrepresentations to some investors by falsely claiming that either the company or one of its funds had received an audit opinion from a top four auditor. However, neither BK Coin nor any of its funds actually received an audit opinion at any time. Oh, man, absolutely crushing it. Uh, and in case, just because you're probably going to be seeing this face at some point, um, in the clink, in the news, uh, you guys get used to your man, the new Sam Bankman Freed, I guess, uh,
Kevin Kang. So, Bienvenido a Miami. All right, guys. So, uh, that's what we got going on with that. And then, let's close this out. And then, finally, over here. Analyst known for calling crypto bottoms issues an Ethereum and BNB warning says easy mode over for now. Yeah, okay. Crypto strategist who nailed Bitcoin's 2018 bear market floor is warning Ethereum and BNB holders that both large cap coins are flashing bearish signals. No shit. We, well, Jesus Christ, we just said that. God damn it. A pseudonymous analyst, smart contractor, tells his 221,000 Twitter, Twitter followers that Ethereum is showing the same bearish continuation pattern that it flashed last week. No shit. Um, bear flagging ain't pretty, but much uh, ain't uh, bear flagging again pretty much straight away after breaking down from a bigger bear flag last week. Definitely not looking good. Easy mode from the last few months. Looks like it's over for now. Cue the multi-month chop. Looking at Ethereum against Bitcoin, the crypto strategist says the pair has already taken out its diagonal support. Uh, ETH Bitcoin momentum starting to wane. Is there a date set for the Shanghai upgrade yet? Yes, March 14. <coughs> the Shanghai... <coughs> God damn it. The Shanghai update and ETH upgrade delayed to late March or early April. Okay, so if it just got delayed again a couple days ago, uh, it was just announced for March 14 at a, at a specific height. So... Um, which was supposed to be March 14. So delay to late March or early April will allow validators to withdraw ETH from Ethereum's proof-of-stake blockchain for the first time following the transition from proof-of-work consensus mechanism. Looking at BNB, utility token of crypto exchange Binance, smart contractor believes the large-cap altcoin could be printing a bearish head-and-shoulders pattern on the weekly chart. BNB uh, weekly looks absolutely horrid on USD pairs and Bitcoin pairs. The U.S. are targeting Binance big time, and it reflects in the chart. And by the way, uh, if you look at the pairing over here, which we're not looking at right now, but if you go to BNB over here and you look at um, a token over here, it's 286. So, uh, you know, really, if if you're looking at BNB under about 300, eh, it's not looking that great. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would agree with the sentiment over here that, it's not looking awesome. So I'm going to agree with this guy at least just a little bit. Now, uh, and uh, Crow never recovered from FTX. Right. Most tokens did not recover. We saw Bitcoin uh, recover back to the November number, but it was one of very, very few that actually did do that full recovery. And we can see that pivot right here. And Bitcoin has found support at that level. Uh, Ethereum is struggling to get over that level. Basically running on that support line. Crow, not even close. Uh, MX did, of course. Um, SHIB, just, SHIB is not there. Um, da, 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 da. Veracity is there. XRP is not even close. Ooh, we got to get rid of all of that. Look at that. Yeah, be, um, anyway, um, it's not even close. Um, Doge, not even close. Band, not even close. Matic was over. Now has retraced back under uh link not even close bnb not even close uh avalanche was over now back under ave same thing xtz i think we pr pretty much most of the uh, uh most of the blockchains probably are going to be a, a, a mixed bag of the same thing not even close for quant not even close for solana mina protocol is the one of the exceptions remember mina protocol was running pretty hot uh, at one point, uh, Gala Games was above, now below. Uh, same thing over here with Engine was above, now below. Same thing with Dot. Uh, most of these uh, did not survive. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, once it does get over the, well, you know, I don't know that that is the case, by the way. We actually have quite a few levels that we're going to have to get back through. Um, so first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have that. Let's get rid of that right there. We do have that pivot right there for November and we're under overall right now, but then you also have, and we're going to do this as a pivot because I like those a little bit better. So we're going to use this as this right there. So that's the next one up, and that's August, and that's the dump that happened from, uh, um, Jesus, what do you call it now? Am I losing my mind? Uh, that's the dump from uh, the uh, the ETH merge. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> then you have the Celsius. Then you have, you know, all the collapsing all at once. And you have Celsius, <clears throat> three arrows capital. <clears throat> Damn. You have Celsius, three arrows capital, and you have Elon Musk dumping on the market uh, with, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Tesla. That all happened right here. And then you have, uh, up here, which is where everything collapsed. And that was the Terra Luna Classic. That was the biggest of the bigs right there. So these are the areas that you have to recover from. And you can see right here, like we're not even close. This is the total market cap. We're not close to that August number yet. So we can look at all of this relief rally that we've had, but that only makes people happy if they bought down here in this range, right? Uh, that's that's where you 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 felt good about your positions and you started to get a little bit of a pump uh, going on. So that makes you feel good. That makes it look good. But at the end of the day, you still have some big, big numbers. Uh, you know, you would think at, at some point I would, that the lung would just disappear. Um, but... Those are the numbers. So we, we need uh, 1.032 trillion uh, for to be the recovery from the November collapse. And we're at 982. So we've got 50, we got 50 billion to go that we need to hold for good because we've seen that money exit the market over the last little while. Uh, then we need, uh, and we need to use that as support and then bounce back up. And then we need to test uh, 1.178 right there. Then we need to be able to test 1.263. And then if we pass those three numbers right there, the recovery is on. Okay, that, that would be the indication that the recovery is actually in full effect and, and it is really happening. So and the Dow Jones did open and it is basically just trading even. I think everything it looks like is, is basically trading even right now. So um you will see how the day plays out another two billion has bled from the market as we've been sitting here so um and we can see right here on the day chart that uh it's just kind of continuing at this point so we'll see how this plays out over the next little while uh but what we need is support and we need to start pumping back through here getting out of this channel and up into some higher numbers but we're not going to see very much until uh, uh, until Jerome Powell speaks and we start to get an idea and an inkling. So uh, I think everybody is going to be listening uh, to, to see what it is that he has to say. And uh, a lot of places are going to be streaming it live. Uh, in fact, I, I would venture to say that there's going to be a lot of people. Um, Tom Crown is going to go live in just a little while and you'll be able to watch it over there. It looks like, uh, I don't see any other advertisements for it for upcoming, uh, but there will be people that'll be covering it, uh, while I'm at work today. Um, but, um, and you know what y y you just, you might see a little bit of recovery here because, you know, not everybody's looking at all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> so um at some point we're going to get that big move right we're going to get that big big move and you know we'll see it all start to play and we'll know which direction we are headed now i do think that the overall direction is up 
And I think we know that because we've seen uh, just recently, um, uh, we've seen just recently that um, uh, the the yields have gone down, the treasury yields are going down. And when, when the treasury yields are going down, that means something good. And we're seeing the money flooding back into crypto for some reason, rapidly coming back in. Uh, we just added $3 billion in capital uh, back into the market in just like a few minutes. So I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, Dow Jones down just a little bit. Uh, I don't imagine that people, look, I mean, people are not going to get into risk asset um, at the riskiest point. There might be some people who are out here trying to run a pump. Uh, to make something happen uh, because remember there's a lot of people that are betting right now. And if you go over here and look at coin glass, uh, then we can get an idea of what it looks like. On the 24 hours, you can see that, uh, you know, it's a mixed bag. It always is right. Uh, but I would give this to, I would, I would give this over to say the shorts are probably, um, a little bit higher up on the chart right now. Uh, it looks like there's way more of the shorts sitting out there right now. Uh, liquidations that happened over the last couple of days. Uh, when you look at that, you, you see that, um, it was 16 million longs liquidated. Uh, yesterday versus 6 million shorts liquidated. So, uh, and by the way, you can see right here, huge amounts of shorts got, li longs got liquidated, longs liquidated heavy, uh, longs liquidated heavy, longs liquidated heavy. You're seeing a lot of that happening right now. And you see that just over and over and over and over and over again. So it looks like the bears have been in control for a little while. So it's entirely possible that this is one of those opportunities where, um, you know, somebody has decided, hey, we've got set up with with a whole bunch of people shorting right now. And when the shorts win enough, then at some point, the longs are going to start popping these guys and and wrecking these positions. So, I mean, you know, why not do it while under cover of Jerome Powell? Uh, yes, Uh Shibnobi, I don't know that it's dead. I talked to Keith. Keith said they're going to try to make a go of it uh, just without Cliff. Um, and I'm not sure. Listen, I don't know. I, I can't speculate. I have no idea what really happened over there. Um, it's my understanding that Cliff bought a brand new um, uh, car, old, like an old car. And that car got cancer or something. So I don't know. Uh, but they disabled everything but two different uh, utilities. <clears throat> and I think that they had people convinced that they had 19 utilities. And now they have two. So uh, they want to. And and by the way, like, and, and here's what you got to understand. Uh, like Maddie says, go make a go of what? And I mean, here's what people don't realize. Like, like people look at Uniswap and they say, oh, well, it's dead. It don't do nothing. Well, actually it's got $4 million in trading volume every day, which is more than almost every other token that you're dealing with. So it's got a low market cap at this point. So there's opportunity uh, for a pump to happen and for them to turn it around especially when they've got $3.9 million in volume happening. So when you start to look at these markets, there is an enormous amount of trading volume uh, with all of these uh, different uh, web centralized exchanges. So uh, is Shibnobi dead? Probably, but uh, can it be revived? Well, yeah, because people like the name and just the name alone, if you provide them some value to that name, then it's going to pump. It doesn't matter who's in charge. Look, everybody wants to blame Cliff because he's buying. Yeah, he, he bought a Mustang. <coughs> and uh, by the way, um, everybody created a conspiracy that he bought a Mustang with the, the, the money that he stole from Shinja. But nobody knows shit. They're just a bunch of whiny crybabies who cry about everything anyway, right? 
Wah! Terrarium stole from me. Wah! Saitama stole from me. Guys, people made a shitload of money off Terrarium. People made a shitload of money off Saitama. People made a shitload of money off of Shinja. If you bought the top, that's on you, partner. That's not on that's not on them. And if they did the same thing and they made a whole bunch of money, then you know what I'm saying? Like, um, just because you got wrecked doesn't mean that everybody got wrecked. Uh, there should be a bunch of people who are coming back soon that are gonna love Saitama and they're gonna love it because they made a bunch of money off of it. And then they exited the market because they knew it was getting bad. And they're gonna come back in and be like, hey, let's see what we can do about it again. And she's like, Tom is going to pump again. And people are going to be pissed. They're going to be pissed. So um, is Shibnobi dead? No, because Rodney doesn't dictate the market. And just because Rodney makes sweet videos about Shinja rugging and, and Rodney and Jake do their thing right now, uh, the, 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 the sniffle conversations, just because they're doing all that kind of stuff right now doesn't mean they're right. It's going to pump again because it still has a ridiculous amount of volume, and it has a group of people who are developers who still want to continue working on the project and continue developing the project. So uh, can they revive it becomes the next question, and we're going to find out pretty soon. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, that leads to, let's get that out of the way. Uh, here we go. We're going to take a quick run down here. Uh, NGN is up to 81 cents. Uh, Floki, 44.62. Um, Lillian, 60.13. Volt, 16.26. And by the way, guys, Volt, Jesus Christ, you can't even like pause for a few minutes. Uh, you, you, I mean, like you take just a moment <clears throat> to catch your breath and then there's more. Yes, Teddy's still with it. Um, so here we go. Uh, Volt is going to, for the, for the rest of this month, they're going to, Whatever you burn over the course of the week through the natural smart contract is going to be doubled, and that's going to be burned as well. Forty-three billion were burned in the past week, so that would mean that another forty-three billion extra are going to be burned, and it's going to be on-chain, a circulating supply, not um, not not bridge liquidity. So it's Jesus Christ! Like there's a gigantic amount of burn going on. And I just like watching this bitch do a face plant every day. So. Uh, even if I'm not, let's just take one more look and watch this crazy bitch. Uh, here, jump lady, go ahead first. Duh. God damn it. That just, every time she does that, it's like a, a walk through the park on a warm summer day. Uh, come on lady, vault it. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Every single time, every single time. Like, bitch, you know, that blue thing is not water, right? You know what I mean? Like, like, Ugh. <laughs> Oh my God, it gets funnier every time you watch it. Um, but yeah, uh, she's vaulted. Wham. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So anyway, uh, then over here, you got this compare market cap that says if Volt reaches Doge's all time high, that's 1,015x from where it is. Uh, two zeros, 14. So there we go. Um, Volt is the only project in the top three that's listed that, that only has one top 10 centralized exchange. But look at this. Volt is trading number two of the top, let's call it five, that uh, he said top three. And I don't know about Ham and, and Lovely anyway, but uh, these guys are on top 10 centralized exchanges. Volt's only on one of them, and it's trading bigger volume right now than Baby Doge. Um, and about half what Floki is, but that's still significant. That's still significant because uh, Floki was running about a $300 million market cap. So uh, like just Jesus Christ, like it just continues to go. Uh, Volt V2, you can buy. Uh, Volt is on 117 different exchanges. Uh, you can you can uh, go to Volt Inu Official over here on Twitter, and uh, you can figure it out from there. It's uh, Volt at Volt Inu Official, uh, and then you can find there's a hundred. Again, I think there's like 117 exchanges that it's on right now. Or you can go over here to Uniswap, or you can go to uh, Pancake Swap. Uh, you go to uh, poly, uh, poly Swap, whatever it's called, Sushi Swap, and you can uh, uh, do it over there. Or you can go to their website, which is voltinu.in, right here. And this is part of Uniswap. Uh, and you can go to Volta Change right here. 
and you can buy it through Volta Change as well. Um, and Volta Change is still coming with limit orders and um, and a bridge. So, yeah. One more time, run that back. Come on, lady, do it one more time for us. <laughs> oh God, that crunching sound that she makes when she hits it that you guys are not hearing right now makes it all worthwhile. Uh, and that's not really happening, by the way. Look at that handsome devil. Uh, but uh, stage five right here. Um, first VDSC reward. I don't think that happens this month, but I don't know. Bridge on Volta Change. I don't know that that happens this month, but I know that it's working. Volta Change gamification. I don't know that that's happening, but uh, we do have the VDSC game. So I think that that might happen. I don't know. Uh, global staking platform. We know Volta Flex is coming pretty soon. Volta Soft, Volta Eco. I don't think those happen. Volta Shop. I think that's happening pretty soon. Three top 10 CEXs. I think two are coming. I don't know if three are coming. Uh, the Battle Royale game. We're already playing that. Uh, VDSE in-game marketplace. Don't know. We have the 100th Volta Change Widget Edition, which as Shante pointed out here, uh, it happened yesterday. Uh, 1 million burn at all time high, which is going to be on March 16th or March 17th. I think if the plan, if, if my super crazy guess here is correct, uh, Volt library, uh, not sure what that is yet. Uh, I just assume that I'm going to be one of the biggest chapters of it. Uh, 250,000 holders, which is going to take a while because we have 60, about 64,000 holders now. And then 250,000 Twitter followers, uh, Volt currently has 167,000 Twitter followers. So that's something that's probably doable over the next, uh, I mean, that could happen in two weeks. You never really know about that. But I mean, again, the point is there's just nonstop shit happening in the Voltiverse. It never ends. And uh, look, here's the thing. One of the, one of the important things that I'm guessing, I have no idea. I don't know that this is the case, but one of the things that I recognized that I think, I think that Voltoshi tries to allude to and hint at for people uh, to give them that alpha in case they ca they catch it. And that is that they're following the same path as, she uh, as Sheba followed, right? And the biggest pump on Sheba was January 31st. <clears throat> and guess what happened to Volt on January 31st? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 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 let's go back over here and we see that big move right there. And then January 31st goes to February 1st and then it just takes off. Right. So we saw that happen. Right. And I'm on the hour chart, so it's a little easier to, to kind of look at that way. But, uh, you can see here that that's when the big move happened, right? Well, that's also when the big move happened with, uh, with, uh, with SHIB. So then we come back over here to when was the next big move on SHIB? Well, that was on March 15. Uh, and that was, uh, let's go ahead and put a line down here. Uh, that was right here. So that's when the next big move with uh, SHIB took place on March 15 of 2021. Now, let me see if I got that on this chart right here. Because I don't actually know. I don't know if there was like a, a, a vert. Hell yeah. Uh, let's go back here to. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, this starts on May. Uh, shit. All right. Um, there is. You can go look up ship. Or, you know what? God damn it. I can just go do it myself. Ain't this a bitch. All right. So we're going to miss some of these other ones. But, uh, you know, they're down and they need to pump a little bit. Uh, but now I got a point to prove. Jesus Christ. In case you're wondering if I can let shit go. Obviously, I cannot. All right. So let's go back here on the day chart. Uh, refresh this. Go to uh, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. And then boom, right here, March. Um, right there. And then that's when... We got this move right here from uh, two all the way up to three. So we had a 50% increase at that point. Then, um, yeah, so they're, she's, they're following the same path. So 
Um, this is the big pump moment for SHIB, which had billions of market cap at that point. So uh, it's going to continue to do the same thing that it's always done. So uh, I consider that the all-time high is going to happen on the, the 16th of the month. But I'm guessing I have no data that's going to back me up and nothing else that will back me up on that anyway. So, all right, guys, it's not financial advice. My name is Believes. I'm always right. I got to get to work. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you again for bedtime tonight. I'm for the good life. Good night. I'm sitting on top of the world. I want to be shining like diamonds and pearls. I want you.